Hola. How's it going in Palm hey, Springs? In Palm Springs, yeah. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> yeah. Live. Oh my goodness. Yeah, how's it going? We we've got a lot of rain here and a hurricane coming. That's what's happening in the physical weather here. Yeah. Yes. Um and the zodiac weather. What do we have? Well, it's it's a little complicated. I mean, things are pretty intense right now everywhere, I'll say. You know, energetically, we have moved into Libra, you know, and we moved into the teen degrees in Libra, which means we're in the place in Libra where it's how we relate to the world instead of how we relate to ourselves. That's the big change, right? And so it sounds like you guys, you know, out in Florida is literally how you relate to Mother Earth, the world, right? Right now, literally, you're going to that literally with, uh, with weather. So it's, it's, um, it's a little bumpy right now, I'd say, in lots of places because people have you know, integrated their definition of what a good mirage is to themselves. So I think people know what they have to be to themselves. But now all the relationships you've made in the world that were on a bad mirage where you, you know, didn't consider yourself this way or didn't consider yourself that way, never considered your, you know, certain terms and conditions with this friendship or certain terms and conditions with this job. So now you're suddenly stuck in this situation where you realize that, that everything doesn't really serve you in the world you've created, the life you've created. Now, if you really have learned to upgrade your life and know what your needs are, it's sort of like signing a contract and then learning about what you needed in the contract. So you're mentioning that the, we're going to the teens of Libra and the first 10 steps were about our relationship to ourself, right? Right. And can you just, explain for the audience a little bit is this happening throughout all the zodiac signs we're all going through a filter like on all the zodiac signs we just happen to be in libra now and that has to do with our relationships first with the self and then externally okay so yeah really we started this over the weekend so you probably had some breakdown breakthroughs over the weekend because we went into the teens really starting uh, Thursday night and Friday. We started to expand out. And <clears throat> at first, when you go in the teens, you just sort of go, okay, how's my life? You know, it's just sort of this like exploration, 12. Like, you know, Saturday, we hit step 13, Saturday night to, Saturday, uh, to Sunday morning. And so what that means is that um, things got started to get turbulent Saturday night, Sunday morning, where you realize, oh, man, I think a lot's going to have to change. This isn't going to work the way – it currently exists, right? And so there's been a lot of breakdown, breakthrough, as we call it, when we realize, I don't think I belong at this bank anymore. I mean, actually, that's literally what Serious Joy said. We don't belong with our bank anymore. Like, we're, our bank's going to struggle. We're like, we don't belong with them. So a lot of things like, we don't belong with them. I don't belong with this. I don't belong with this lousy haircut. You know what I mean? Actually, it's like a new haircut. But the point is like, uh, these things I don't belong with. And so kind of frustration uh, <clears throat> going into um, today. Today's when it's really coming clear. You know, it's like, I definitely don't belong with this. I definitely don't belong with that. So today we're clarifying. And then tonight, as we go into tonight, we're like, I just want things to be happy again. And so we're starting to really think about, well, how do I make this right? That's what's about to happen after our show. So I don't have a, my step uh, program in front of me without hanging up on you on Instagram. But I think it's going live around 2 or 3 in the afternoon as far as 15, step 15 is concerned. And step 15 is the next grandmaster uh, relationship. It's the next six. So the first six is your relationship to yourself. Step 15 is your relationship to others and relationship to the world. So 15 net six is that coming up. Okay. And when you talk about time, are you, is that just everyone's time where they are on planet Earth or is this a specific time zone? No, uh, actually, the way it happens is the entire Earth, because it's based on the Earth moving, Right. The entire Earth will move to the sector of space of Step 15 Libra in like four hours from okay. now. And so the okay. entire Earth everywhere. So Australia will be asleep. So it'll happen, you know, and that's one thing we track at SeriousTour.com, which is a nightmare. Not really, but it's just a lot of work because we, we, we track it and then we translate it into, and in your town, it's this at this time. And in your town, it's in this, you know, we're constantly right. translating where, what time it is in your town. Uh, if you go to our homepage right now and you, and it, and it reads where, where you're located it'll translate on the fly you know the step number in australia versus step number in america like what time that'll be in the time of the day you know? yeah so we all go through the step change at the same time which means the collective consciousness is like is wired together 
And so there's a cosmic time, which is a step number. There's a cosmic time. And that, and, and that basically comes down to it's time to do this. It's time to do that. Right. And come step 15, it's time to find peace. All right. 15 is the combination of, I'm going to fix my hair, your, your heart and your, and your mind. Five is your mind and one is your heart. Okay. So the first thing that happens when you hit 15 is your heart wants one thing and your mind is like looking everywhere for it. Like, where is it? Well, how do I do this? Right. And one of the things we teach at Serious Toy is like the mind needs to turn straight to the heart and say, well, what do you wish? What do you wish? What is your wish heart? Because what happens is where people are amateur at this step number is that they think the mind, the mind goes running off in its own independent. I'm, you're fixing your hair too. We're just yeah. going to be like this. We're going to be a cover girls I mean, uh, commercial. You mentioned it. So, and I looked at my hair and I realized I have this weird strand coming off of it. Yeah, yeah. totally. It's hard. <laughs> right, we need hair and makeup. We, Gary, we need a budget increase. We need hair and makeup on the set. Um, so the first thing that happens is your mind usually goes into a little bit of a – you can go into a panic at step 15, like a little panic. That's what I'm leading up to here. And that panic is like, whoa, I'm going to fall off my life. You know, like everything's getting out of control. Everything's crazy. What's really happened is your mind has gone running off trying to find answers, and your heart is feeling abandoned by your mind. So in that state – you're like you're in this kind of chaos state which you've we've all seen libras be in this so you know this is a grandmaster libra degree 15 because it adds to a six and it adds to a six is grandmaster libra um, and that means you know people born as a 15 have figured this out and not only figured it out they can pretty much bring 15 out of anything they can find the peaceful way of anything in life because they found this peaceful way uh, the rest of us are, are all learning and trying to get past this moment so as far as the weather's concerned, it will appear stormy here in the next, as soon as we hit 15, it may appear very stormy for the first, you know, 10 or 12 hours of the step number because people will be like, where's my coat? Where's my tie? Where's, you know, like, where is it? They're kind of panicking, looking in different directions or feeling that panic. The panic you're feeling is that your mind has, a, has abandoned your heart. So, so if your mind is not talking directly to your heart and going, well, what can I do for you right now to make you feel better? Instead of the mind going, we need to fire that person. We need to do this. And just your mind's just running around the room and your heart's in the, in the corner crying. You know what I mean? Like that's what, that's what the chaos really is often, that type of thing. So that's the warning. But you will find peace. What happens in 15 is um, it's just like na a nature part of the universe. As soon as the mind shuts up for a minute um, and it wakes up, like it, it, it like reboots, sometimes it's a nap. Sometimes people go do something, they find that Zen in another place. As soon as the mind remembers it works for the heart and it's not its independent agent, then at some point you realize it's going to be okay. And you mentioned grandmasters, you mentioned six mm -hmm. and 15 mm -hmm. breaks down to six. And uh, you mentioned peace. So does grandmaster mean that, yeah, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? We have a question also. When you say grandmaster, what exactly does that mean? So grandmaster means something different in every sign. So every sign has its grandmaster step numbers. And that's when the, the number adds up to the same number as the sign's whole number. So the number of Libra, Libra's number is six. That's why Libras are so sexy, right? They're very sexy people. And they're all about the sixes. And the sixes is when you have three and three on each side, basically. It's balanced, three and three on each side. So if you even think of it from a weight perspective, you know, that would be balance weight. And it's also balance of three and three because it's more than two because, you know, balancing four is not, is actually not a big of a deal. It's called a table. Four is not really balance, right? That's a stable. Four is stable, like a table. But six actually takes some finessing, right? So six is the number of balance. Um, and, and so Librans are the rulers of balance and peace and harmony. And for you to have peace in yourself, uh, you must bring balance to yourself. So your chart will show you how off or on balance you were born to begin with. Some people are born way out of balance from the beginning. They put all their energy on one side of the chart. So the chart's like tilting this way. And so they're always having to apply pressure on this side to, you know, or let up pressure on that side, to, you know, or let up awareness or focus to balance it out. So whenever you hit the number of the sign and in the sign, that's a grandmaster degree. And so if someone's born at that degree, they have already learned 
the way of the sun. They've learned the way. And because they've learned the way, they have special powers that other people don't have who aren't grandmasters. Those special powers are, for instance, the ability to balance, like, so six would be able to balance things bigger than just themselves on the inside. Or maybe a six person would be able to balance, like, your health from posture maneuvers, like help another person balance health or be able to, you know, just balance things that are outside of the normal idea of balance. They also have the ability to change what balance is. So a six might learn how to balance things, you know, upside down, you know, with a hat on. Like it sounds goofy, but like they can balance in weird situations. They can balance on the fly, on a moving train. I mean, just I'm being silly, but when you're a grandmaster, you actually are pushing the envelope of Libra. So grandmasters end up taking Libra as, as a whole to a whole nother level that Libra wasn't the last generation. They're the progressives. They're the ones that like, and, and so signs change over lifetimes and they're changing right now in a big way. In fact, Libras are changing a lot um, as far as what we have witnessed in Libras. In fact, you know, astrology from like the seventies won't make sense to like your, you know, our grandkids because it won't be the same, same definition. It'll still be the same like sort of um, marketplace, right? But you won't make a joke about a Libra being a serial monogamist. You know, like that's something that only 70s astrology because Libras have learned how to balance multiple relationships. It's not, they don't have to have just one to balance out. They're kind of you know, learning more of a, I don't want to say polygamy, but it's like they have the ability to keep many relationships going at the same time where the old fashioned Libra is all about you, 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 the one, the one, the one. And now they're moving into the many and the many. So just like because of the earth getting more complicated, for instance. The third uh, master grandmaster is step 24. And step 24 is a master of all relationships there are, and the master of relationship between man and humankind, and like the master of relationship between man and, and God. So the really big relationships, the big ones. Awesome explanation. And just to reiterate, in case someone missed it, a grandmaster of another sign isn't necessarily going to be a master of balance. It's going to be a master of what that signs uh, number and state is. So like, let's say the opposite of, which is ironic, the opposite of, of six is nine. Six and nine go together. And even their glyphs fit together. They become one, like 69 becomes one when you turn them to, into each other. Mm -hmm. Same is true with Aries and Libra. Aries and Libra turn toward each other, make a 69. They make this perfect yin yang. And Aries is the ego and Libra is the sacrifice or the release, letting go. So, you know, and so in, in the world of ego, which is what I am, your opposite, you and I represent 69 on camera, you could say our rapport is 69 in, in action right now. For us, it's all the nines, all to the nines. And so 9, 18, and 27 to add to 9 are the Grandmaster nines. We get by shipped up. Yeah, by the way, I, we were just at the Human Grads event in Miami, and so many people came up to me and were talking about this show. And really? I, yeah, like it's it's uh it's popular amongst the people. Like they they really like the the, the back and forth. Um, you know, because I'm asking questions. I'm I'm relatively new to all of this and inquisitive. And some of the questions I'm asking you, I kind of know, but I'm definitely a beginner at, at all of this. And so one of the things that a lot of people are talking about, because of what we talked about last week, which was the solar eclipse that happened, um, I think Wednesday, right? And last week, week, yeah. It was yeah. Wednesday night, yeah. Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. Do we have anything else to add about that, or is that just completely finished? Like, no, I mean, you'll see, the ap you'll see the aftermath of that eclipse for six, six months until the next eclipse. So the aftermath is dominoes keep falling as a result, right? So, you know, the, the com you know, an eclipse is a, com is a commandment, basically. It's a commandment kind of from the universe going, this is what's going to happen. And what it's, there's two types of eclipses. There's a lunar eclipse, which is um, basically takes away the normal emotion and gives something else, like shows you the shadow of the emotion. So there's something like, oh, you kind of see what's under the rug in the lunar eclipse. And you're like, oh my God, I can never see, see again, you know? Uh, and so you're suddenly kind of repulsed or pulled away from something. A solar eclipse is the opposite. That's what we had last week, which said, this must happen. It has to happen, which basically saying this huge blast just overwhelms the earth with this commandment. Okay. 
And so people, and the commandment was, you have got to make yourself, each human has got to put their relationship to their self as more valuable than it has ever been. Mm -hmm. You have to value yourself more than you've ever valued yourself again. And value yourself in the context of Libra, which is there must be something I need to receive if that's the case, not something I need to do. If it was 10 Aries, it would be, there's something you need to do, right? But it was 10 Libra. There's something you need to get for yourself that you don't have. Because Libra is Right. So it's God in different sign language, you know, literally. And, but it was a commandment. So what happens is, is like, you know, so, so let's say there's something you need to get for yourself. There's something you need to bring into your life. So let's say you bring into your life, I'm going to bring in a meditation practice. And then in meditation, you hear an angel talk. And they're like, oh, wow, the angels talk. And then well, what do they have to say? And then they're like, we've chosen you. And you're like, what? Chosen me for what? So <laughs> it's like, it just, it just starts to ricochet, whatever that is. It's like, you know, it creates like a cr crack in the foundation. And, it, and that foundation is the way you've always lived your life. And so the, the eclipse, it has aftermath for up to six months of the consequences of that. And you will look back and go, wow, everything did change from that point. You, and then it's like, well, because I need to receive this, well, my husband's not giving it to me. So it's not, now there's a marital issue. Now, you know, now we need to go to therapy. Now there's a financial issue. So it's just, it just spreads. I feel like this is such a season of change. And also, this is something you have been talking about. Like, we knew it was happening in like September, October, November, there was something that was going to happen. And I see shifts in, in my personal life, my wife, um, human garages, entire ecosystem is, is shifting right now. And, mm -hmm. and even like the political, the political stuff is like all like, it's like getting more pressurized, <laughs> seeming to like explode. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's come it's it's interesting because it's something that we've been expecting we didn't really know how and what it was gonna look like when it showed up but it's definitely showing up in a lot of our lives yeah well you're speaking to what we had been predicting was pluto uh going to 29 capricorn for the last time in our lifetime okay so the thing about that pluto pluto you know is a slow moving planet it's the zero it's, it's zero it's no number it's the no number 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 the number that's no number which you know a lot of cultures didn't have zeros like romans didn't have zeros that's why they had roman letters there was no zeros so they didn't really add up they didn't get it like romans weren't as smart as you think they were they did, actually did not know about zero right, right. so zero is a special thing zero is zero you don't know about it until you know about it like you know it's like it, and it's so funny because it, it represents yeah it needs to be discovered like we needed to discover that to know what happened we didn't know what we didn't know, you know, like, so there's like, it's, it's like a double unknowing. And so Pluto is the double unknowing. So Pluto is saying, when Pluto moves through something, it's like, okay, that's it. You need to know that you don't, don't that you don't know something. So it's like a double whammy. Like, A, you didn't know it. B, you, you should know this. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, and so wherever Pluto is, it's sort of that wake up call. Like, whoa, like, holy, oh my God. Right. Like, so Pluto is in, is in Capricorn at 29 degrees. Well, we know how intense Gary is at 29 degrees Sag, right? And 29, you know, 29 is when you when you go a little too far with it. Okay. A little too far. Okay. You know, and, and too far, the reason it goes too far is because 29 is emotion and ego, right? So you know if you get into a wait, fight wait, with you. What does too far for a Capricorn mean? Well, that's what I'm gonna get to. It's like okay. first of all, it's just to show too far in any all other right. sign. Like too far too far too far comes down to like that question was too far. You, you, no, I'm just kidding. So like too far, no, too far is because the ego and the emotions, 29, ego and emotions, when a fight goes too far with someone you, you love or anything, it goes too far because the ego is pushing and the emotions were like, you better stop, you better quit doing that, you better. So the emotions get more and more intense and ego gets more and more intense and boom, it goes too far, right? So you have like a spiritual nuclear explosion at 29, things go too far, they get out of hand right? 29 is when things get out of hand. And things get out of hand because the ego and emotions start bouncing off each other too much and you end up creating something like a spill. Now, it's like because 29 is the final degree, just like zero is the final degree, 29 and zero, 29 can be two things. It can be 
go too far. We made it to the moon and too far off the earth. Like, oh my God, we went farther than we've ever gone before. Or it can be like, oh God, we bombed, you know, we bombed, Pearl, you know, we bombed this city and it turns out they, they actually surrendered. Uh oh, you know, like, which is what happened with the bomb. So we can go too far. So the thing about 29 is, you know, that's Pluto at 29. So it's like, where our, where we're, where we're we're, where the people are not even aware that they should be aware of something goes too far. So you see what I'm saying? Okay, so Pluto at 29 says, because we're not aware that we should be aware of something, something's going to go really, really too right. far. Because there ain't anybody even there to realize we're going too far. <laughs> right? So this is like the double, this is like where we are the most stupid. Like we are, we are so ignorant. And here's the irony and paradox. We're, what are we ignorant to? We're ignorant to people who have gone too far. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so in Sag, we don't realize that some philosophers have gone too far. Some teachers have gone too far. And that would be like, let's say Hitler's youth, you know, like back in Hitler's youth in World War II, the teachers were teaching the kids that Jews were bad. That the, t- the teachers were teaching the kids that, you know, they should only have one leader, and that's Hitler. The teachers then went too far, right? They took away free will. They went against some of the principles of the universe. They went too far with their power. They got all riled up about Hitler, 29, and they went too far. And the kids didn't even know that. They didn't even know that that was even possible. They were, they were innocent. They had no idea that that was even possible. So that's a similar situation. That's Sagittarius. Capricorn is with the people who are in power, the people who are currently in power have gone too far and the people don't even know they've done it all right yeah i definitely see that and that's happening 100 because 99 like and even the people that think they know we probably don't know don't know, don't know. <laughs> you, you don't know what you don't know right. and, and right. i and i every time i go down a rabbit hole like that even i'm like holy crap i didn't know that you know like there's so much that has been hidden you know, down, down to the fact that, you know, who knows? I mean, everything down to alien technology, all sorts of stuff that they call conspiracies. I'll tell you right now, everything you call a conspiracy will later be labeled a business plan. It was a, you mm-hmm. know, honestly, I mean, and, and that's what we tell that's people. I don't believe it's had been. Yeah. It's, 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 a conspiracy is a business plan among many businesses that all connected with the same plan. That's what a conspiracy is. And, you know, at the end of the day, you'll find out. And, I know because I talk to angels and I talk to people off this planet. Otherwise, I wouldn't even know really for a fact. I mean, I have so much faith in what I receive from that, that source that I can say, guys, I'm listening to the people who don't know that they don't know. And they're telling me, you know, I mean, like who do know that they know, like the opposite, who've been here, they had a planet this stage, who've been this through this stage. Um, and so worth it, worth the real explosive moment of realizing just how asleep at the wheel we were. Which, by the way, you know, some of the German people felt the same way. I'm not trying to pick on Germans today, by the way. Thank you for being an example for us at this time. Because there's been so many times where I'm like, I used to think in school, like, how is it the German people didn't know that he was mass? How did they not know he was mass killing? You know, but the truth is, they, they did a very good job about hiding it from the people. They made you feel scared if you went off track. Like, there was like a, a lot of major manipulation going on there. And so when, you know, when, um, uh, who was it, uh, when Eisenhower forced the people of the town village to go through, you know, these crematoriums, the people were freaked out. But like Germans could not believe, they just could not believe that their government had done this underneath their own eyes. They just could not believe it. Like, and they went through a major depression, the whole country for a long time, because they just could not believe they did not know. It, just, it blew their mind like aliens landing. And unfortunately, folks, Folks, we're up, we're up for a moment like that, you know, like just to throw you off balance on a step 15 day. Like we are, and, and it doesn't have to be something as horrific, you know, but there's, you're going to be just blown away at how, how you were, how, how you've been misled into thinking it's completely opposite of what you thought it was. You know, you know it's kind yeah. of, it's, it's a moment. It's like, I'm not trying to bum people out. I'm just trying to like, you know, prepare. I, yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask about that, that like, how do we, operate what would be your suggestion since you have guidance we'll call it other world like other dimensional or worldly guidance on 
how do we, if we don't even know we have a blindfold on, like, like what emotions or what mind state is best to operate in a time like this? Okay, you just asked the perfect question because it's the 11 steps to serious joy. It's like, it's a whole tower of knowledge. The first tower is zero, zero step zero, I protect. First of all, you say you're gonna protect yourself. I'm gonna protect myself and say right off the bat, that if I didn't know, I'm not gonna punish myself for not knowing because there's no way I could have known. So my boundary is I'm not gonna punish myself. I'm not gonna punish myself for Hitler's mistakes. I'm not gonna punish myself for anything. I'm not gonna let them punish me. I'm not gonna punish me. That's my boundary. No punishment. I didn't know, they didn't know. So you said in the law of where your boundaries are. Before, you, before I even know what it is, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna tell myself I'm pardoned. It's not my fault. And that's my, Super my, that's my rule. Step one, I love. And I'm gonna love myself, even if people tell me that I'm a jerk for letting it happen in the United States. Like, by the way, the United States is the biggest offender. Like, we're gonna be the bad guys in perception of the world. You know, actually, I think the people of the world are a lot more mature than we are. See, we're caught in a bubble and we blame people. But you go to Europe, they're like, we understand, they're Americans, yeah. you know. Like, you guys they, are they, teenagers. Yeah, they look at us as the kids, right. Yep. And they're, some, of them, some of them are maybe like, finally, you know. But like the Germans will say, ha, ah, it's your turn now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like, but, you know, I think actually that's our projection of our stuff, you know, um, coming out to us. But, so I'm going to love myself. No matter what, like, you know, you know, I have, to, America has to go through its hardship. America has to earn its wings. Like we have to, I'm going to love myself anyways. It's okay. It's, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, that's the way God built it. This is just a big sandbox where you, you figure out how to build a better sandcastle. And then step two is I feel, and you say, I'm going to focus on the good feelings and I'm going to focus on maybe the, the compassion. So that's what I'm going to focus on. So you plan, you basically pre-program the states of awareness. How will I feel when that day comes? How do I plan to feel? How do I plan to take that belief? The belief is based on what your heart feels. So if my heart is going to love myself and my feelings are going to stay positive, then I'm going to believe that I'm going to be positive. Step three, I believe I'm positive. Step four, that means that I belong on the side of the solution, not the punishers. You know. Step five is I'm going to only think positive thoughts and think about what can happen from this, the good that can come from this. Step six is I'm going to open up and accept all the mistakes we made. I'm going to accept the fact that I, you know, that I could have done better. I'm going to accept the fact that I did, you know, they, you know, all I cared about was video games and, you know, and chapstick and the Kardashians the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, I'll accept that. I'll accept that that's what we were. And some people had already been there and some people hadn't, you know. Step seven, I'm going to, I'm going to forgive myself right now. I forgive myself. I'm already forgiving myself right away. It comes with pre-forgiveness built in, right? Pre-forgiveness built in. Step eight, I'm going to commit to building a better world. So that's step eight, I commit. Nine, I'm going to follow through with what I commit to. I'm going to do what I commit to. Step 10, I'm going to make something valuable out of this nightmare. I'm going to make something better. And step 11, I'm going to become the best version of myself I've ever been. So if you pre-program the steps, the conscious steps of reality, then you will be mostly immune to the public depression. Like you'll go around going, God, I wish the person knew the steps, or I wish the person you'd know, be feeling sorry for your brother or sister that like just like, like had to taught themselves to suffer and punish themselves, thinking that they're going to do you know do better in heaven or do better with the go the world if they punish themselves because they're so caught in basically the the programming that the Christians did to us, you know, and the Jewish, you know, you know, I love I love what religion's intentions were, but it was brainwashing also, you know, like. As soon as the ones who, the few that got in power, they turned all the good stuff that Christ said, all the good stuff that Muhammad said, they turned all of it into to control. And we've been under the, you know, that belief structure. So we have layers of lies, you know, yeah. to sort of, sort of look at. It, uh, that reminds me of an approach. I think it's humanistic. I, I forget the actual name, but it essentially, you learn to view yourself as a progression. And what you just explained was, it was a progression mm. and it's a progression mm. that you're expecting to go through as yourself. And then you mentioned like other countries looking at us as a progression. And so some people are going to understand that another person or another country is going through a progression. And that's ultimately what we get to do when we view ourselves as a progression and we're going through these phases, then that allows us to look externally and see everything, society, 
the government, our friends, our partners, they're all in a progression. And then it, from my Libra mind, allows us to be more in harmony with the ups and downs of their progression and how that impacts us. Mm -hmm. And it's, and from my, yeah, my airy synergy, it means we will, I, we will progress, you know, like and for me, it's like, and we will progress and we'll make progress and, you know, um, and I'll, I'll buy progressive insurance, like all that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, wow. We just went over a whole bunch. Whole we bunch. did. That was deep. Yeah. And did we cover what's going on? Well, oh, we have, one thing we before... covered this with this week's about, but you go ahead. Yeah, I was going to go into that. But one question I had had to do with natural disasters. Mm. Because if a natural disaster happens somewhere and if somebody's in it and then they're looking on social media or maybe they don't even have social media because there's no power there, but they're aware that there's somebody else in California who's got sunny weather at 78 degrees, you know, and chilling out at the beach. Like, does a natural disaster in somebody's life like what, what is that? Is there any meaning to that? Like, is there any meaning why somebody is going through that? And then 90% of their country is, is just having a regular old day. Yeah. Yes. I mean, first of all, think about the times when it took like, you know, a ship to three months to get across the sea, right? Like in those times there was no connectedness to one side of the world to the other, you know, like there was no, you know, part of this ability to be compassionate for, you know, this last hurricane you know wasn't even possible it took like you know two months for the letter to get there right so they had already starved to death and died by the time that letter showed up or whatever you know like so it didn't that, that wasn't a possibility but i think you're we are all assuming that these are natural disasters when in fact some of them may be unnatural mm -hmm. disasters and so thank you there's a darker there's a darker layer here um i personally feel the last hurricanes that i've seen in the last four years are unnatural disasters now that comes from my psychic ability to feel when something is not in alignment with Mother Earth. So I can feel when Mother Earth has cancer. I can just feel it. I can feel any, I, I'm saying anyone, but I can feel if I tune in, I can feel if there's some cancer. And what's cancer? Cancer is when this, the organism is fighting against itself. Like, mm -hmm. feeds itself as the enemy. <clears throat> starts stabbing itself, starts hurting itself, right? Which is crazy because you were programmed by God to heal yourself, not to destroy yourself. So, you know, for cancer, for instance, I, when I read old books, they don't talk about cancer. Like, right. I don't, you know, cancer, right. when did cancer come along? Like, it seems like in the 50s. Like, it, if you read like Hemingway, I mean, Hemingway's not too soon, but like, if you read like, you know, old stuff, like Shakespeare and stuff, there's not like, you know, thou art not have cancer. Like, there was none of that. It's not there. Right. It's been something's happened where it came out of nowhere. Right. So, um, you know, I don't think the only thing that came out of nowhere is creation. You know, um, otherwise it's been man-made. Right. Like, you know, God hasn't created since creation. Let's put it that way. Like, there's maybe, but I don't think we're seeing it. So the thing is, is like we have to be careful. I think first of all and foremost, if something bad happens to another human being and they didn't ask for it, we should care. Like, you didn't ask for that, right? You didn't ask for that hurricane, did you? You know, if you asked for, for it, well then, enjoy, right? But if you didn't ask for it and it happened, something's wrong because reality is based on what we create our reality, the real we become, what we be is what comes. Now, I do think in natural disasters, okay? In natural disasters, natural meaning man isn't causing it, right? Like a volcano. Okay, I don't think yet, you know, Dr. Evil can create a volcano yet. I don't think, I don't think we have the power. I think they're trying. Actually, I've heard some theories of what they're going to be doing. But, like, you know, that's something where it's like, you know, that's something where, where like, usually the volcano warns the people. And people are like, oh, that's weird. You know, like, so, like, and you get three, like, roars and you don't leave. Well, the volcano told you, you chose to stay. Right. You know, it's, it's yelled as loud as it can, and you you guys are going to say Pompeo or Pompeii or whatever. So in that case, you you chose you know to face that. You didn't listen to your elders, and they told you this happened in their lifetime. So uh, in that case, you know you have chosen this, and, and you've chosen to be a part of this disaster, and you have actively chosen. 
If, however, it's just like something just explodes out of nowhere with no warning, right, or a hurricane that comes off the water and has very little warning, then I believe what's happened in that case, especially with weather, is that the collective population has become depressed, okay? Depressed. Their energy has lowered because we're in a co-creation with Mother Earth. You know, she's given us food and we're giving her, like, you know, gas and poop. And, you know, we give back to her. Like, we do. It's weird, but we do. We, we're in a system with her that we, we take from her, we give back. We take from her, we give back. Our body comes from her, we give back. And energy, too. We don't realize that, but our energy comes back and forth too. We have energy relationship with the earth. And so we give off, you know, we give off our anger. If we let our anger out, okay, all that flows up to her and she deals with it. We let her, we bury our dead, all that goes down and she deals with it. If we stop that part in an, in an area where like everyone's depressed, they just stop participating. I believe they created a, a depression. They, so, the air, so the air pressure lowers, right? Like, so everything lowers that spot. And so I think mother earth, you know, starts to to accommodate like that. She's got a hole. There's a hole over this over this city. The whole damn city is depressed. And I think something in the architecture of her will be like, will like will just pull in. You know, the storm to that area. And so I believe that in the old days, human beings pulled in the hurricane. Human beings pulled in the the, the earthquake, right? And mostly it's coming from people refusing to grow and not participating. From what I just analyzed, you know, it's like, so in the old days, yes. Today, no, it's, it's hard. You know, I'll just call it out. Great it's, out. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it is all sorts of bad uses of technology. Yeah. I'm sure, sure of it in my heart. I know it. So yeah, that's how I think about it. So I think we have a, you know, I think also too, it's funny how you'll see too, like for, for instance, um, in a hurricane or whatever, in a legitimate one, um, it's one They pushed the button and <laughs> took, us off, took us off the air. Didn't they? Yes. That is exactly what happened. You think so? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah uh, I don't know. I mean, I might. My, I thought what it was you yours again. Oh. You know, because the last few weeks, it's, we've been getting kicked off of your internet. But then I was just waiting. And no, our internet's strong here. Oh. So I don't know why that even happened. Okay. Like full bars, full Wi Fi, full everything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, all right, folks, you, you saw a demonstration of the power. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we'll say. And we'll just say that, you know, or, you know yeah. I, I, my list, I, I called up, you know, headquarters. And I was just like, I think I'm putting out too much truth. <laughs> yeah. You know, so let's get realigned to this next yeah. week because that's where we are going. Well, well ultimately, you know, today we're, we're moving to step 15 and step 14 and step 15. So, Today you realize that um, that life is not fair. That's basically it. Like, put it simply, life's not fair. It's not being played fair. And so what do you do about it? That's basically what this week is. It's not fair. Now, you allow it to happen. So, you know, FYI, maybe if we didn't know, we didn't know. But now we do know, you know, so life's not fair. What do you do about it? And, and so we go through the steps of, Tomorrow you sort of, you know, tomorrow night into, into Wednesday, you sort of pray to connect to your higher self. And I would say, you know what, when you're in Libra, you're in the I receive energy. So you actually in a better place to receive a prayer's answer in Libra than you are almost any other, other signs. You're constantly open. You're receiving all the time. You may not pay attention to what you receive, but you're receiving. I'm receiving a lot of weird stuff right now. Um, just as an example. I had a friend over who's a mystic, you know, it's the house. And I'm like, I think I hear conversations going on in the house. And I know where they're coming from. I'm, I think the ghost, you know, I'm like, but I'm also hearing like music, like orchestra. Am I crazy? Do you hear it? And she goes, no. But she like zoomed in. She goes, but they're saying you're picking up on other dimensions right now. And you're picking up, you're receiving other dimensions stuff. And I was like, wow, that makes total sense. Because it felt like I was hearing a whole lot of conversations going on. And, so the point is, you can receive beyond your normal reception. Your hearing is better. So really, we don't have the knowledge to get past this moment because when you're in the dark and there's only one source out there that is guaranteed to help you every time you ask, it's not Superman, it's spirit. You know, like it's there. So I recommend on step 16, people actually ask from their heart, 
to I want to know what I need to know. Like, help me out of this situation. And by the way, that we're meant to we're meant to do this in our in our evolution. We're meant to realize that we have <clears throat> higher powers that we can call to. So this is the time to pitch that. And I will promise you. I mean, I can't prove it. I, you have to try yourself. But I know for every client that does this, they get the answer. You will get the answer. You'll get the answer in a dream. You'll get the answer in a bumper sticker. You'll get the answer from your partner. You'll get the answer. Sometimes the kid will tell it to you. It's weird how it comes in. It's kind of fun to see how it comes in. It's kind of a game. But it comes in. And it's undeniable. And at that point, you want to deny it. So your next thing is like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. It can't be true. So the first, your first thing will be to deny it, right? Because it goes beyond your belief. But we then get to step 17 which is like uh, Wednesday night, and that's when you're going to start to, to decide and commit. All right, what am I going to commit to in my relationship to work or this or that? Whatever relationship is not working or unfair. And sometimes, by, by the way, you may find that the relationship is unfair and that you've been the unfair one. But sometimes you realize I've been unfair to this person, right? Right. And so, so it's like, okay, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to make it fair? Are you going to sweep under the rug? And then basically – on uh, Thursday night, it's like, okay, it's time to get started. It's time to make this happen. All right, I got to make this happen. I'm going to go. And then on uh, Friday night, you're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this happen. I'm going to hold it together. And then things get really tense on Saturday. And then, you know, you fly above the storm on Sunday, hopefully. All right, so we should have fly above the storm to the, third, to the third chapter. Now, there's two important things that happened that I didn't mention in the story. One is that um, Jupiter goes direct on Wednesday. At, um, I mean, it goes retrograde on Wednesday in the afternoon. So, so this Wednesday in the afternoon, let's say we're using the, air, the airplane. We're trying to fly out of this storm. Wednesday afternoon, all the instruments go out. So Jupiter stops feeding us information on Wednesday. Now you go, oh, so what? Well, you don't realize how Jupiter's been helping you the whole time. Because when Jupiter's direct, it's like feeding answers all the time. And, and people either pay attention or don't pay attention to it. But it's been feeding answers to our mind this whole time because it's in Gemini. So our mind would be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you could do this. I could do this. Like You don't even realize that answers have been coming immediately to you. Unless you pay attention to conscience like I do, you don't realize that people have been getting answers really quickly and ideas really quickly since the end of May. Uh, tons of ideas. And we could do this. And we could do that. And this can happen. Right? So suddenly all these positive ideas of what we could do goes silent. All right? So suddenly it's like, well, I don't hear anything. And so what that feels like on the inside is um, you start losing hope because a lot of the hope was being supported by this stream of, of, of things, alternative things that you could do. Well, we could do this, we could do this. Now suddenly there's no voice saying, you know, did you know this is possible? Did you know that was possible, right? What it may mean in your life is that, and it's not going to be me this time, but sometimes you find that someone who's been a good source of information is gone. Like someone that you relying on a lawyer or a doctor because they got sick or they're in the hospital. So some sort of information goes. So that's a huge challenge um, that in this time is scary, right? Like the instrument panel goes out on the plane. Then what happens is on Thursday, the next day, the next day, Pluto at 29 goes direct. See, Pluto has been moving backwards this whole time. So basically, mm. Pluto's been going you better stop this. I'm going to do shit. You bet. You bet. I'm telling you, you better stop. You better stop. It's moving backwards. And when Pluto goes direct, it's like, that's it. So Pluto starts storming in energetically, which means we feel a shift of tides. Like, whoa. you know, so it is actually hurricane making. This what, you know, Jupiter and, Jupiter and Pluto switching directions a day apart. That is definitely a, like a ripple right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a ripple that smacks us, right? Like in one, two. So we do get a one-two spat um, right when we're supposed to decide and turn in our homework. So what, what that means is you're not going to feel like yourself. You're not going to feel like yourself when you have to make the decision. You're just going to feel off. That's how I think the practical way to look at it is. It's like the practical way to look at it is I just wasn't feeling myself. So what that is is sort of like in the journey, you know, the hero of the, of the story, which is you, needs to remember what they have learned. And needs to go inside them and go, okay, I've been learning for the last six months. Pluto and Jupiter were basically going the same direction for about six months, and then they just switched. So what have I learned in this time? 
And the truth is, is you have been told the answer already. You have. You have been told the answer already. You've seen it in your life. You've seen it in examples. You may not have paid attention. You know, you may not have memorized it. You may not have written down the phone number, you know, when you saw the commercial. You know what I mean? Like, um, but you have seen it. So we really are blessed by God in the sense that there's a, there's, it's Jupiter. There's a, there's a planet that's just always sprinkling knowledge, always sprinkling knowledge to the earth, always. I mean, it takes breaks twice a year, you know, once a year in a retrograde. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know other planet systems that have that, but it, it's not, it's not built into as a necessary, you know, basically imagine a world without human garage because Gary's a grandmaster of 29 Sag and he had a vision of like telling the world everything he knows. He was like, I want to tell him everything I know about the body and everything. I learned about this and he doesn't get paid for it. And he, he doesn't, you know, it's his heart wants to give it. And so the thing is, is when you take that away for a moment, not human garage, but someone really nice who, who's telling you, you are left alone to figure it out on your own. And so basically that's what's going to happen. It's going to hit the fan and you're going to be left alone to figure it out on your own, you know, basically Wednesday and Thursday. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. It is Wednesday and Friday. I had one day off, Wednesday and Friday. Okay. And then you mentioned tomorrow, though, is a really good day to step 16 to pray and receive. I would, I would pray. Yeah. I, I think everyone should pray for the world. And for, yeah. Because the thing is, is the, the, the rule is God told the angels. They have to ask. They have yeah. to ask. They Pretty have well. to ask. So this idea of, um, you know, the angel came in and saved me, that's because before you went down to earth, you asked them to do that. You know, they basically said to you, would you like us to save you if you're about to die? And that was like, you know, if you're about to be interrupted or do you want just to reboot? So, you know, people, why do people die in a car accident and others don't? Because the ones who didn't die, who, who had that near-death experience, from what I understand, from my people tell me, they asked, they got wise enough to go ask the angels, like, don't, please just come in, fix it if I go off course. Or sometimes they ask the angels, too, to, to end it. Mm -hmm. Like, if I go off course mm -hmm. again, I become a drug at the end, just, just end it. Just pull me out and start starting over again. So, like, there's a pre-filed request in there, right? So, the point is, is, like, you will not be helped by anything supernatural. Even evil won't come in until you, you ask them. Even evil needs your permission. Right. So anyways, the point is, is you, if you don't ask tomorrow, you know, which is the best day to get the signal and the best day to hear, then, you know, you didn't ask for help. I feel like people have a feeling of like what you were just talking about. If, if like some people expect the help, some people know to ask, some people know they're alone. Some people are almost expecting to die young, you know? So it's, it's like, there's mm -hmm. something still encoded. Mm -hmm in us from some other time or some other place where we do have some sort of touch to the pulse of what you're speaking to. I agree. And I know like for mine, give you an example. It's like there was a time when I became um, a, a fighter for, for Christianity. So I became a Christian fighter. And then I, um, you know, so I fought, you know, I killed the name of Jesus. So I killed in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, I got up there and Jesus was like, seriously? That was good, you know, like, but I realized, oh my God, I killed the name of, you know, so it didn't dawn on me, you know, until, so then at that point, I know the next life, I pretty much was like, God, I'm not even gonna ask you. I'm just gonna show you how good I am. So mm -hmm. I had this attitude, like, I'm not even gonna ask. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be a good boy. So I put in this instruction, like, I'm gonna be a good boy and I'll show you. I don't even want you to try, do anything. Let me show you how good I am. Well, unfortunately, I, I did show him how good I was and I started to go back to the side of doing good stuff but I never removed that policy of I'm not going to ask. And so, so, um, and so I didn't ask for a lifetime, after a lifetime, after a lifetime. And it was until this lifetime, plus my psychic awareness coming on, I was like, and then people saying, I never asked for help. I'm an arrogant asshole. Like, why didn't you ask for help? So friends and people around me are like, you're so, we, we try to help you, you don't let us. And I realized, oh my God, I'm still, I'm still trying to prove to God I can do it. And I forgot, you know, so I had to undo that. So not only does it last, it lasts between lifetimes until you stop it. That's a good reminder. Which is why you, I think of those, those, those positions you're talking yeah. about. Some people do, some people don't. They're living off of a subconscious decision. They haven't, re they haven't looked at again. Yeah. So I want to respect uh, your time in case you have any appointments. 
is do we have to wrap up? I know there's forever you can talk about this. And guys, Chris is going to be back on Thursday where you can get more information, even ask him questions. But did we cover everything that needs to be covered for the for the the people for now? Or where can they find out more information if they need to get it if we haven't? So, you know, you can always find out for free, seriously.com, like what's going on with the weather. And you do, a, there's a free, um, it's going to be called now the, um, the daily uh, mini scope. Like it could be a mini scope instead of daily download, but we give a daily mini scope on just what's going on. So if anything, you've been, you've been like sort of warned or whatever, like, you know, but you know, if you want to get to your power, that's what our service is about. What I will just underscore again is the next two days, the next two days really starts tonight and it ends Wednesday morning. It's really about asking and listening. And remember, your answers will come through Rock. It will come through Gary. It'll come. They'll be saying something, and you'll get goosebumps. Goosebumps are the angels leaning into your field, telling you, "Uh huh." So you even have your angel will lean into your field and like poke you when the answer is right, like "Uh huh." So you know, goosebumps, chills, you know, heat wave. You know, that is the universe. That's your soul going. This is the right answer. So there's communication built in. In the next two days, pay attention. You know, that was attention. Was, yeah, I wanted to highlight that too. So I'm glad that you think that's important. Definitely, definitely uh, pay attention and ask and, and make sure that you're listening. Because we don't know what we don't know. And that part too, which is an amazing part of this. Yeah, we don't know what we don't know. So, and we have to wake up to that idea. If you just admit that you don't know what you don't know, you start asking for it to come in. Right. Because again, they're, they're not going to tell you something if you don't want, if you don't ask them. Right. So, make space. So it's, We'll come back and see what happened, Ra. That's if we're a alive. Time. No. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> if we last that long. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, be, we'll be okay. Yeah. All right, Christopher. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, always everybody. a pleasure, Ra. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Super Thank fun. you, Instagram. We love you. We support your Instagram. <laughs> we'll, always be, we'll always be there for you, Instagram. We, we support you. We support you. Support you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.